traducción en inglés no es canción en inglés pues hemos pasado tres días de We have been together for three days in the first mindfulness retreat in Spanish. So yesterday night, we had a singing session. So we've been singing many poems from our teacher, Tai, and some of our friend, Vietnamese friends know these poems in Vietnamese, but um, uh, Ana Bardosa from the Spanish Sangha has written the music for two poems. So, we're going to start with the, with the poem called Steps in the Sun or Travels. Yaki. Palabras escritas, huellas en la arena, formaciones de nubes, mañana me abre y He aquí palabras escritas, huellas en la arena, formaciones de nubes, mañana. Me ha reído, me ha reído, me ha reído, me ha reído. Me ha reído He aquí Palabras escritas Huellas en la arena Formaciones en nubes Mañana me ha regido He aquí palabras escritas Fue en la arena formaciones de nubes mañana me ha reído me ha reído me ha reído, me ha reído, me ha reído. The next poem is called uh, Contemplating the Moon. You can imagine the full moon that is coming in a few weeks' time. 
and the poet looking at the moon and realizing that no the moon nor the observer had a separate being. Es la luna llena esta noche y yo no no es su yo es quien contempla la luna esta noche y yo no Precisamente porque la luna no tiene un yo y quien la contempla tampoco lo tiene por lo que la luna y el que la mira. Maravilloso, por lo que la luna y el que la mira son maravillosos. Y también lo es, de su hecho de mirarla. También lo es, de simple hecho de mirarla. Es la luna llena esta noche y un yo. No, no es un yo. Es quien contempla la luna esta noche y un yo.
We're going to listen three sounds of the bell to practice coming back to our breathing and to enjoy this moment to be that we are together and that you're listening into Spanish, which is fun. I think it's the first time that we have in Deer Park something like this. A day of mindfulness in Spanish. And we are here around 40 people. We've been together for three days learning mindfulness breathing. So now we can practice to have all our attention in our breathing. In Inhaling, I am putting all my consciousness in my inhale. Exhaling, I'm putting all my attention in my exhaling. And we can feel how the air gets into every cell of our body. in Spanish. So please raise your hand if you speak Spanish. How many people have come just for the day that we speak Spanish today? And the others <laughs> have put the, uh, the invitation in Google Translate to understand. We are surprised that there are so many people coming from a day of mindfulness in Spanish. The, the song that we just sang propose a meditation. And we can do this meditation every time we look at the full moon. But we cannot wait until the full moon to practice that meditation. We can practice it now. So, 
we can start by, by looking at the person that is sitting in front of you. I am made out of the sun. It is quite clear without the sun. I don't have any energy. All the energy of my body comes from the sun. I'm also made out of the earth. This is clear. My bones, my muscles, every single cell of my body is made out of molecules that are coming from the earth. I am the water, the water is life. So I am 60% water. So what you see in front of you is almost like a bowl of water. <laughs> so when you say I'm buena onda in Spanish it's like a wave I'm also made out of the fire it means the heat whatever I eat gets together with the oxygen that I breathe It makes that every cell of my body creates energy that I can move my body. So I'm also fire. Heat is the heat that we have. It's like in every cell we have a, a gener an energy generator. And that generator combines the sugar, the sucrose from the fruit, from the, from the food, with the oxygen, and then we have heat. I'm also made out of my mother and my father. Without my parents, I wouldn't be able to be seated here. In every cell of my body, my mother and my father are present. When I speak, when I think, is my mother and my father speaking and thinking. I am the continuation of my mother and my father. I'm my mother, I'm my father. And we can continue with this meditation and we can see that the person seated in front of you is made out of all the things from the universe from one in one way or another but except one thing but this is a separate being is a self We can imagine a self, a separate self that is completely isolated from the universe. The stars are here. Here are the planets with trees, and then we have the sun sending light, and among here, inside here, we imagine that there is a self that is a permanent, isolate, isolated from everything else. It's a bit crazy, right, to see it this way. How come you can have something that is not linked to everything else? 
when the sun changes, when the planet changes, when the star change, this doesn't change. That's why the Buddha proposed, as well as our teacher Tai, to contemplate the moon. That means that when we see deeply the, the moon, we can see that there is not a self separated from anything else. It's just an idea that we have created in our mind. But when we look deeply, the reality, there is not such a thing as a separate self. But yes, all the elements that we can call them not self, all the elements. Non-self. So, this meditation in the song is the full moon. Is the full moon a self? Tonight? No, it's not a self. Is the observer looking at the moon a self? No, it's not a self. So, how come the observer that can enjoy the moon? It's only, it's precisely because, because the moon doesn't have a self. Because we can enjoy of it. When we have a conflict between us and the person that we love, we want that person We want the person to go away. We feel like anxious or anger, and we want that person in one or another to stop existing. We, we have hatred, we have anger, and we cannot accept the behavior of the person that we love. And we have, we want to cut off. We want to make a separate self from us. I am a self, and she or he is a separate self. We don't have anything to do one to another. That's what we feel. But we know very well that this is the result of very strong emotion. But when we look deeply, that is not the truth. That is not reality. My parents divorced when I was 20 years old. And on that period, my family, I think my father and my mother felt that way. Uh, they wanted to be separate selves legally, <laughs> of course. But my, my parents had me and my sister, and now they have grandchildren. And so in, in myself and in my sister and in the grandchildren, in every single cell, we have our mother and our father. So how can we divide? How can we make separate cells from my mother and my father? We would have to have a very, very sharp knife and divide every single self and say, this is my mother, this is my father. Of course, this is a joke. 
These are the really funny things we do with our minds, creating separate selves. So in order to heal this habit, this habit of thinking, we have this, this poem. It's the, the full moon tonight, a self. I'm going to take the text to, to say it properly. It's the full moon tonight, a self. Self? No, it's not a self. So the moon is made out of all the elements, non-moon. When we look deeply, we know that the moon is made out of the earth. We have discovered that four billions of years ago, a great, uh, almost a planet, crashed with the earth. And with all the heat and the explosion, the earth, part of the earth was uh, detached, and that was the moon, the creation of the moon. So we know that, in a way, we know that the earth is the father of the moon. So when we look at the moon, we're looking at the earth. That's an element, no moon in the moon. When we look at the light of the moon, that light is irradiating from the moon. Where is it coming from? It's coming from exactly from the sun. So the moon is only reflecting the light of the sun. So this is another non-moon element. And we can continue this way, the stars, the stars before our solar system, all the gases that created the solar system are the parents of all of us. The water, the air, the, the, the stones, the, those gases are also the parents of the moon. So when we look at the moon, we can see to this star, very old star, coming before our sun. So this is the meditation when, that we do when we contemplate the moon is who, who contemplates the moon tonight a separate self. So with the meditation, with the moon, we are coming back to our own body. And we have seen already that this body is made out of the earth, the sun, from the rain, my mother, my father, all these elements, all, the only thing that is not there is a separate self. That means in this body I can see all the universe. So the meditation that we do with the moon, we come back to our own body. And that is not philosophy, it's a meditation. And we call it concentration. Concentration. On the non-self. Is, is one of the more basic concentrations of the meditation. This uh, window that we have here has got three words in Sanskrit. Our tradition comes from India. So the first one, smirti, means 
mindfulness, it also means remember. Remember that we are present. Remember the present moment. When we come to this monastery, the basis of our practice is that we're going to live outside the future and the past. And we will arrive every single moment to the here and the now. So with the walking meditation, we are inhaling and with our foot on the earth, we're going to be conscious of the in-breath and the out-breath. Why? Because usually in everyday life, when we walk, we are thinking where we're going, where we're going to arrive, or we are lost in our thoughts of the past, But we have the habit of coming back to the present moment, to where we are in this moment, on the soil that we standing up. So that's why we come up to the monastery to cultivate this practice of arriving to the present moment wherever we are. I am here. This is my house. Here it says, arrive at at home. And we practice this every moment when we are walking, every step, with every step, we are arriving home. So every place, wherever we go, is our house. We don't have to go to a building where we think, this is mine. We, we can arrive home in every step, and that is a practice. It's not an idea. It's an idea to realize this arrival. So this is mindfulness. Mindfulness means don't get lost in the future or the past. It means to make, to have this uh, capacity, ability to know what is happening outside or inside of us. We start with our in-breath and out-breath, conscious, mindful of our breathing. And when we're mindful, mindful of our breathing, We don't get lost in the past or in the present. We know that we are here. And the second word, samadhi, means concentration. And this concentration is not what we think, what concentration is. Like, oh, I need to, to concentrate, I need to do that test, I have to focus really intensely. Intensely. That's sometimes what we understand for concentration. We can get lost in this idea. Concentration is to keep our meditation objects through time, like the breathing. For instance, if, for instance, this marker, if this marker is my breathing with my concentration, 
my finger is my attention. So when I practice mindfulness of breathing, my finger, my attention is all the time, all along, my in-breath. And when I, in my out-breath, my attention is all the way through my out-breath. This is what concentration is. Every time we get lost and the attention goes to another project or to my anxiety, we've lost concentration. That is, we lost the object of our concentration. And so we practice smiling and to get to know that this is normal in a human being to lose concentration. In the Buddha's sutras, we talk about a monkey that is in a mango tree, and there are lots, lots of mangoes that are sweet, and while the monkey is eating a mango, he's looking already at the next mango he wants to eat. So he gets the mango, starts eating, and then he looks another one, and he said, oh, that is a better mango. And that is the monkey we hide inside of ourselves. The mind always looking for the next mango, for a more interesting, more sweet mango. So the Buddha proposed some practices so that we can really enjoy the mango that we are eating in this moment and do not get lost in the future mango. And so the mango we have is always the breathing. So during this day of mindfulness, we can practice to see our in-breath and out-breath as a mango, as the most sweet mango that you want to eat. And we're going to be conscious that we're going to enjoy the mango all along the way. We're not going to think about the mango that we're going to have in the future. So many times when we are eating, we are enjoying the flavors of the food. But it's like food, like phantom food, for instance. I eat a tomato. And so we start eating the tomato and we flavor the tomato. But then, when you continue eating, you start thinking about all the tomatoes that you have been eating in your life and how the flavor of this tomato or probably about a tomato that we ate some of the time or the conversation we had with somebody when we were eating another tomato. <coughs> so we completely lose the, the, the tomato that we have in now. So we can talk about it like a phantom tomato because we have a tomato kind of an idea only. <coughs> <coughs> so today when we eat we're going to practice to enjoy completely the food that we have in our plate <coughs> we're going to enjoy what's in the and be aware of it we won't lose ourselves imagining sensual pleasures. We listen to one sound of a bell. Enjoy, enjoy the mango of our breath together.
felt your breath was a little tastier this time. Yeah, a little bit, or about the same. Well, for me, my breathing was a little more flavorful, considering it as a mango. How can we then? He who contemplates the moon, how can he who contemplates the moon enjoy it? That's the question from a person who doubts. So you tell me, the moon doesn't have a self, and the person who contemplates the moon also doesn't have a self. So then, how can I enjoy it, the moon, if there is no self? This is, this is a question that helps us cultivate the third word that we have above in the stained glass, which is prajna. Deep looking. is to say vision has an accent, doesn't it? Okay, vision. We have this idea that we have to have a self in order to enjoy something. And what the poet says, how can I then someone who Someone who doesn't have a self, enjoy it. It's precisely because there is no self. And he who contemplates it also has no self. That's to say, precisely because the moon and the person contemplating the moon both have no self, it's, that's why they can both enjoy it. it sounds kind of strange. <laughs> What do you mean you can enjoy? Well, let's return to to a separate self that we were considering. That is inside the person, the person contemplating the moon and in the moon, and perhaps in everything we can say. This idea that we have a separate self in everything. And this self, of course, it can't change. If it changes, then it's not a separate self. It's to say that things like the moon, like stars, like earth, they're all influencing this self, this separate self. To, so that's to say it's not a separate self in the end. It's connected with all the miracle, all the universal miracles. So this shows us that looking, the deep looking by the poet, it says it's exactly because we don't have a separate self, which cannot change, that we can enjoy of the shining moonlight. It's precisely because we're impermanent. We're always changing. That we can touch the beauty deeply in life in every moment. That is looking deeply. At the poem. So you see how these three practices, smirti, mindfulness, samadhi, concentration, and deep looking are, to are linked together. These three, we call them the three trainings, basic trainings of meditation practice, mindfulness, concentration, and deep looking. 
we, when we're looking deeply and realize there is no separate self, we cultivate more mindfulness because we know it's incredible. Within this body, the entire universe is in it. I'd love to be more conscious of what is happening within my own self, inside my body. This way, I don't have to send a space telescope to take pictures, pictures of, of 14 billion light years away of distant universes. Of course, it's interesting, but we can, we can be our own astronomer of our own body if we have mindfulness. We can see how to heal ourselves, how to care, care for our difficult feelings, shining light of mindfulness in, on these emotions. This is this is this is deep looking in the part of the poet. It's exactly because the moon, precisely because the moon has no separate self, that we can enjoy it. It's precisely that the moon has no self. And the person who contemplates the moon also has no separate self. That is why the moon and the person observing it are miraculous. That's to say everything is miraculous. When we have this sense of deep looking, then everything, all phenomena within our self, our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts become a miracle to us, including including suffering, including suffering. So we stop avoiding or running away from our suffering. We stop, we stop opening the refrigerator, looking for food to eat when we suffer. We stop looking for, for a beer to drink or we stop looking for a cigarette or, or a movie to, to distract ourselves of our suffering. Because suffering, we know, it's like a baby within ourselves. That's who's crying, suffering. And shining this light of mindfulness, looking deeply into the suffering as a miracle of life, we can understand this suffering. We can understand the elements that are non-self of that suffering. That's to say, my suffering is also the suffering of my mom. It's also my father's suffering. It's also the suffering of all my ancestors. And now, in the present moment, I want to care for and heal the suffering of my ancestors. Mindfulness is what helps us to heal that suffering of our ancestors. The moon and he who contemplates the moon are miraculous and also the simple act of looking at her. The simple act of looking at the moon is also a miracle of life. It's one of the greatest miracles. <laughs> one of the most miraculous miracles of life is that we can simply see the moon. That we have the consciousness that within this world that seems so material, there is mindfulness. It's, it's magical, it's miraculous that we can be aware of the moon. The simple act of looking. So, 
so I'll leave you with, with this poem, which you can find in a book, a poetry book by our teacher. I think I'm not sure. I'm sorry that we don't have it in Spanish, but we do have it in English. It's titled Please Call Me By My True Names. Please Call Me By My True Names. And it's, it's a very beautiful book. We're very happy to have this opportunity to practice together in Spanish. And I hope that in the future we can have more. Is there anyone here who'd like more Spanish mind, days of mindfulness? Okay, great. Well, maybe once in a while throughout the year we'll be able to do this. And maybe in the future we'll have more nuns and monks who speak Spanish. Because... As one brother of mine said, when we're singing last night, this is just like Vietnamese culture. We sit down throughout the night and we sing. I think, I think there's a connection culturally between, between Latin culture and Vietnamese culture, such as living in family. In a few minutes, we're going to have a recitation of the five mindful uh, recitation of five mindfulness trainings, which are which is a practice of a global spiritual path. We call them the five tr mindfulness trainings. They're there are five practices that we can cultivate every day in order to be to strengthen our seeds of mindfulness which we have within ourselves so we're going to arrange the room here in a way and we you can choose to sit on either side and we're going to sing a sutra, which is called a sutra looking deep that takes us to the other shore. And we're also going to practice touching the earth. Sometimes people call this call this practice prostrations, but we call it touching the earth because when you prostrate, prostrate, <laughs> prostrate, oftentimes we think that we're prostrating to, to a god or, or a statue or some other person. But the practice of touching the earth is not that. It's, it's lowering ourselves to the earth, touching the earth only to touch earth within ourselves and to touch the qualities of, of enlightenment that are within ourselves. So during this ceremony, after the incense offering, we're going to practice touching the earth. And so I'll explain a little. It's similar to this con contemplation with the moon. We know the person who is bowing and the person who is bowed to are both not separate selves. They're empty. Empty of a separate self. And this, as we've learned, shows our deep connection. So when we bow at the monastery here at Deer Park, it's a way for us to, to make sacred that deep connection that we have between us. So 
practically we're going to put our hands together like this and begin to follow the lead of a monastic while they do it. And when we touch the earth, we raise our hands to our forehead like this. It's to say my mind and my heart. We bring this to our heart. Are united throughout the universe. So we open our hands and come down towards the earth with five points of contact. Two hands are open, like this, our head, and our two knees are touching the earth. And breathe three times, and then we stand up once again. This practice is letting go of all anxiety, all worries in the earth. When we touch the earth like this, the future, the past, sorrows can excuse me, all, all of it can be released into the earth. That is the practice. It's like um, not sure. Not, not buried. At all, uh, landing, kind of like a landing plane. Our thoughts are in flight, like a plane, throughout the sky. And so when we touch the earth, it's like uh, inviting our thoughts and emotions to, to land to return to the earth like a plane coming down and become solid and we release it entirely all right okay. so this practice which i want to share with you before so that you can understand very well the deep practice of touching the earth all right okay thank you very much welcome to deer park monastery we're gonna end with three sounds of the bell <laughs>